We're back out today with my CNR M1 carbine. Now, I will admit, in my first video with this, I did a pretty crappy job explaining what CNR was and how this shipped to my house. So, I'll go a little bit more in depth on that in this video. First off though, carbine, carbine. It's actually pronounced both ways. If you don't believe me, here's a video from Gun Jesus. I'm going to take his word for it. What does CNR mean? Curio and relic. So any gun 50 years and older is considered a curio and relic. If you get your CNR license, which is an FFL03, you have the ability to start collecting anything 50 years and older. And with that license, you can have firearms shipped directly to your house. Now, I paid way too much money for this thing. I should have got my M1 carbine 10, 15 years ago when they were like 500 bucks. This was $1,600. My only regret was just not getting it sooner. So if you're thinking about getting one, do it now. Let's talk about ammo, availability, and price. Now, when I wanted to get this M1 carbine 10 to 15 years ago, apparently ammo was very rare back then, but now, much more available. This was on Midway USA. These go for 72 cents around. Compared to 5.56 prices now, at about 60 cents a shot, this isn't nearly as unreasonable. Now, the first time I brought this thing out, we were only using iron sights. The iron sights on this are very good, very easy to see through, great clarity, and they're pretty precise. I went ahead and put on this optic mount, and then we went with this really high eye relief scope. We're gonna try that out today, kind of like a scout optic i guess you would call it like a m1a would have or an m14 so let's try that in the 30 carbine today we got the shooting stick out let's put some rounds on paper see if this is sided in then we'll do the offhand well <laughs> i think it's sided in pretty good <laughs> All right, let's go for that top head shot. All right, let's move on to the gel test. All right, let's put three rounds through the gel. We'll get chronograph readings, do some slow-mo. Nineteen hundred and sixty five feet per second. Twenty fourteen. Twenty twenty. Shitty year. It looks like we have some cavitation in there. Now that was a used block. It wasn't really used, but it has some rounds through it. I don't think that cavitation was in there before. I think the M1 did that. Hopefully I'm right. We got six sodas down there. Let's evaporate them. Soda slamming goodness. Sodas are slammed. Now it's Texas star time. We can only take down the big boy because the other ones are only rated for about 450 foot pounds. This thing's close to a thousand. Sweet deal. Let's dump the rest of this mag into the gong. All right, let's move on. Time for the water jug. Let's start at the top, blow the cap off, and then work our way down. I don't think this camera caught it, but that cap 
it had to go on like 60 feet in the air. Well, I was expecting that to last longer, but apparently this has too much power for the water jug. Let's go check it out real quick. All right, so we tore a gigantic hole through the five gallon jug. <laughs> Let's move on to the coconuts. We have two coconuts down there. I have one papaya and one jicama, I think it's called. Jicama, jicama. Jicama, jicama. Um, I don't know what this is gonna do to the papaya or that, but I know it's going to detonate the coconuts. So let's detonate first and then see what it does to the other. I am amazed that this did not explode that coconut. Well, that's what I was expecting the first one. Maybe that first one had no water inside. Because I'm assuming once the round hits, it just expands the water and just blows the thing out. So, papaya time. That actually detonated nicely. That thing just opened up like it had a zipper on it. Now that we've wrapped that up, let's move on to my pendulum. Let's see if we can rock the biggest target on there. Let's make it do a full rotation. Here we go. All right, retry, one over to the left. All right, that was way too easy. Let's try that one on the right one more time. Yes! It took me four mags to do it, but we did it. All right, thank God, we did it. That was the last round. The shooting stick is up. Let's do like a 10, actually let's do a full mag group at 60 yards on that blue steel down there. We're gonna aim for the bolt and just see where it lands. Let's go see what we did for a group down there. So it looks like we have about a fist size group on that target from 60 yards. Let's move on to the ice capades. Then we're gonna wrap up with a, let's do a 70 yard Texas star. Time for ice capades. I gotta be quick before this melts. First, let's take out that giant Lego block. Next, I have a giant frozen gummy bear. Let's move on to my ice cupcakes. Okay, let's move on to the 70 yard Texas star. Then we're gonna wrap up. All right, we're gonna be at 65 yards, not 70. Let's see if I can drop this offhand. Well, that went better than I expected. 
not bad. And that's gonna wrap things up with this M1 carbine that I got shipped straight to my house with my CNR license. This Nikon scope on here has been working pretty well, but if I'm gonna be completely honest, I think this thing deserves to be used with irons. The irons on this are just so good and precise, very accurate. It's gotta be my number one iron sight that I can think of. These things are just phenomenal. So with the scope, it's still good. The eye relief is kind of weird because at this distance here, if I go from 8X to around 4X, it's not bad. But if I go down to 2.5X, say I'm like aiming like this, the eye relief is gonna be like back here. So I don't know how to account for that because obviously I'm not going to be able to adjust it to where all the magnifications are gonna be the eye relief that I want. So I leave this around like five to eight X. When I was back there, it was at eight X. It was pretty visible on that Texas star, not bad to acquire targets with, but I would really love to be able to zoom in out a little bit more without having the eye relief go from full to just this, you know, mini little circle of a scope. So that's my only complaint with this site right now. I feel like maybe a red dot or holographic would work out pretty well. So maybe I'll try that next, or maybe I'm just gonna stick with the irons. I'm not sure yet. I also have another scope that's like this that I haven't tried out yet. This is the only one I've used so far. So that could actually have better adjustability with the eye relief, but I won't know until then. Now this thing is so lightweight. It honestly just feels like an extension of my arm reaching out with it. It is so easy to maneuver and hold on target that it's just, it's like the perfect carbine. I have zero complaints with it. I haven't had a single jam yet. Granted, I keep this thing pretty clean and oiled, so no complaints on there. Mags have been functioning perfectly fine. I only have 15 rounders. I've heard magazines with higher capacity may have jams and issues feeding. I can't relate to that. I only have the 15 rounders. No issue with those so far. Now, aside from the price that I paid for this, I have absolutely zero complaints with this M1 carbine. Two videos in a row, it's been absolutely amazing. It's a sweet little rifle. I highly suggest you pick one of these up if you find one. Do it now. Do it now. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Or else you're going to be paying a lot more money for this. So that's going to wrap things up. See ya.